going on guys? Today we're going to be upgrading the Elegoo Mars. Uh, if you haven't seen my series on upgrading these resin printers in the past, go check that out. But in short, this printer suffers from kind of the same problem that most of these first generation resin printers suffer from. And that's that the Z-axis is not great. They use these uh, bearing systems for the linear rail. Uh, and it's just, they're, they're fine at the beginning, but they tend to loosen up over time. So we're going to replace it with a proper linear rail system. And to do that, we're going to be using one of these adapters that we make and sell in our store. So uh, if you've got an Elegoo Mars, stick around and um, maybe buy one of these. Let's get started. All right, the first thing you're going to want to do is remove the Z-axis. I've already done that on this. It's just a matter of unscrewing this top plate here and... Uh, unthreading this entire axis. It's pretty simple. Uh, be careful, there is a spring in here for the backlash system, the anti-backlash system, so that may pop out, but that's a pretty simple removal. Uh, this will be attached on here. Just remove these four screws and pop it out. You won't need this, but you will need this. All right, the first thing we need to do is remove this back cover. That gives us access to remove the Z-height sensor. All right, so the end goal of this project is to mount these linear rail systems on the side of this guy along here. Now, I found these on sale, I think on Banggood or something. They're longer than what we need. I think these are 350 millimeters. Uh, this is only about 240 millimeters, and you can actually get away with a little bit less. But before we cut these down, I'm going to show you how to mark all the holes along this. Uh, the last time I did this, I used the CNC for this part of it. Uh, it's totally overkill. You absolutely do not need a CNC uh, to make this adapter work. So uh, this time around, we're just going to use the drill press. All right, for this next part, you're going to want to find a surface to work on that's pretty flat. I'm just using this wood workbench, but like a granite countertop or something would do just fine. So you just want to make sure the pillar is flat against your work surface uh, and same with the rails. Uh, you want to make sure also that the rails uh, line up with the bottom of this surface. They don't have to be exact, but uh, I would bring it in just a little bit so that your pillar actually overhangs. Once you've got it lined up, you just want to put your clamps in place. Again, you're trying to make sure that these sit totally flat with that. That's going to help the alignment of everything. And then you just want to double check that the pillar is actually overhanging just a little bit. Uh, that way these don't interfere with the way it mounts. All right, the next thing you need to do is find a drill that is exactly the same size as the holes, the smaller holes on these linear rails. We're going to use this drill to mark all of the positions that we need to drill later on the drill press. Also, don't drill all the way down. We're really just trying to mark the centers of each of these holes. And as long as we're here, I'm going to mark where I need to cut these off. All right, we can go ahead and remove the clamps now. Now you can see we've got real clear markings on where we need to drill all our holes. All right, we're going to be drilling and tapping these holes for an M3. So you're going to need the appropriate tap and drill for that. Right, and we just flip it over, do the same thing to the other side. All right, now all I have to do is tap these holes. Um, I recommend getting a good drill and tap set. Uh, they last a lot longer and you break a lot less taps and ruin a lot less parts. Also, I'd probably invest in a good uh, tap handle if you're going to be doing a lot of tapping. These stare at tap handles are really expensive, to be honest, but they're well worth it, in my opinion. I'm also going to be using one of these uh, tapping guides. Super helpful. Not necessary, but it will ensure that your tap ends up nice and straight.
Am I the only one that gets like really nostalgic over the smell of WD-40? I don't know what it is. All right, that was actually the hard part. Uh, so if that didn't seem difficult, I think you're gonna be just fine. Next thing we gotta do is just cut down the length of our rails. Ah, one thing I almost forgot, uh, you're gonna wanna make sure that these holes are super flat. The tap tends to raise a little bit of a burr and that's gonna cause you problems getting the uh, rail to sit totally flat. So uh, you're gonna have to deburr this. You can do it in a few different ways. You can use a nice chamfer bit. I'm just gonna be using a slightly larger drill. You want to make sure not to go very far. This drill happens to be extremely sharp. All right, the only tricky part about this next step is the fact that these are hardened. So, you know, a hacksaw or even a bandsaw is not going to cut it. So, uh, yeah, bust out your angle grinder. Maybe wear safety protection if you're into that sort of thing. Depending on the grade of linear rail you get here, a file may not actually work, might skate off the surface. These are kind of mediocre, so file works just fine. You'll also notice that I, uh, I left the carriages on. If you take them off, uh, the ball bearings will go everywhere. They do make a little transfer carriage to move things over uh, without the ball bearings going everywhere, but I don't have those on hand, so I just left them on and taped them up. Works just fine. All right, last thing to do now is just assemble it. The cat's help, of course. All right, order of operations is pretty simple. Um, you do have to put the uh, horizontal support on the adapter first, in this case. Um, the old AnyCubic's mounted from the other side, but these actually mount to the back, so you kind of have to do that first. Alignment of this isn't super critical. It should be a pretty tight fit to begin with, but uh, I like to try and square it up the best I can, just visually. All right, next we put the rails on. Now to start with, you don't want to tighten these at all. Just, just get them barely finger tight because we're going to have to do some alignment in a minute. If you did a good job drilling your holes, uh, this should be able to move around a bit. All right, now we can actually mount the bracket. You wanna make sure the bottom of this horizontal support piece is facing the bottom of the, uh, the rail. Uh, you'll know that because there are two screws here for the uh, sensor that this actually lines up in. So when you put this on, if you put it on nice and straight, there should be just a little bit of friction. Uh, in this case, I can feel a tiny bit of wiggle. Uh, there is some inconsistencies in the extrusions for these uh, vertical uh, pillars, so I'm not surprised by that. Um, the kit that we're including now is going to include a few shims. Um, so we've got some 5,000 shims and some 1,000 shims, and between those you can get an exact fit. To be honest, it's not all that critical, uh, but it is nice to have kind of a, a low friction situation if you can get it. With these shims, you may need to put them on at the same time you put the bracket on, so I'm just going to line those up. Nice, solid fit. There's actually a pretty big range uh, in which that fit will work just fine. Um, so if it's a little tight or a little loose, don't worry too much about it. So now we just have to make sure that these are aligned. The best way to do that is just to let it sort of align itself. I usually just will move the carriage as close to the screw that I'm tightening as possible. And I'm going to just, again, tighten that up. I'm not putting a lot of pressure on here. I just wanted enough to, to snug that up so it's not going to move on me much. Very good. Nice and smooth. Uh, once you get to that point, you can really just tighten down all the screws. All right, there you go. 
All we have to do now is put it back in the printer. All right, the only tricky part from here is getting this anti-backlash nut in place with the spring. It can be a little bit uh, finicky, but it's not too bad. There's a few little notches on the inside of that that have to line up with these two notches. All right, that's about it. All I have to do now is put the bed back on and make sure you re-level it. Just follow the procedure that's in the manual with Yellow Goo. All right, once everything's in place, you should notice that this whole assembly is much more rigid than it used to be, and that's really what's going to get you the improvement in print quality. That's going to do it for this episode. I really love doing the upgrades on these machines. Uh, I mean, the print quality you get from them factory is pretty good, and uh, with this little quick mod, uh, they're actually phenomenal, and they'll last a lot longer, too. Also, I'm really excited to announce that we're going to be releasing a full kit for both the Elegoo Mars and the Anycubic Photon printers. Uh, it's going to include the motion rails and all the hardware you need, uh, you're still going to have to drill and tap the holes in the pillar, but everything else is going to be included in the kit. So go check out the link in the description, get them while you can, they're probably not going to last long. Speaking of not lasting very long, uh, we've only got about a week left in our Kickstarter for the Project Alpha Knife. Uh, if you haven't picked one of these up, uh, this is kind of your last chance. Go check out the Kickstarter and get one if you want. Uh, I'm really excited about these wood ones. They're, they're really cool, they're a little lighter than aluminum, so if you want something light in your pocket, that's the one to get. Also, a big announcement, uh, we just unlocked another 100 units of the titanium version. So if you missed out on that chance at the beginning of the Kickstarter, now's your chance. Go get one. They're not going to last long. All right, guys, that's going to... Huh. One second. Well, this just showed up in the mail. I guess we know what we're doing in the next episode. All right, see you guys later.